And a very happy Tuesday to you at 12.08 in the West. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the John Phillips Show. Broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios, where golf weather is going to be here for the seeable future. Although it is supposed to rain next week. So get your golf in now. Mr. Randy Wang's at the sports desk in Culver City. John, this morning, Mayor London Breed of San Francisco had a press conference to promote safe shopping in downtown San Francisco for the holiday season. And I'm proud to say London Breed once again has gone full Oprah. Good morning, everyone. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed, and welcome to Union Square. I'm telling you, at some point, she's going to reveal that Gail is her best friend. <laughs> at the end of the day. 800-222-KABC is the telephone number 1-800-222-5222. For most people, you have a job, you have a house, and it's easy to identify where you work and where you live, where you raise your family, where you collect your mail, where you vote, those sorts of things. For other people, it's a little more complicated. Let's say, for example, you are in the military and you are from a specific state. Let's say you're from California. You're from Garden Grove and you join the military and they ship you off to one place for boot camp. They ship you off to another place for training. They ship you off to another place for stationing. Then we get involved in some kind of international conflict and we send you off to some foreign destination. Where does that person have residency? And the answer is, well, that's negotiable because you spend your time wherever it is that the military sends you. But I guess you have a home base someplace else where you don't really live. So my assumption would be you can file your taxes, and you can register to vote, and you can do your jury service at whatever destination it is that you choose. Some may benefit you more than others, but because you essentially live out of a suitcase, you have a lot of discretion over that. For college students, I would imagine they wrestle with the same thing. Let's say you're from Garden Grove, and let's say you go to school in Fullerton, and you live in Fullerton. Are you registered to vote in Garden Grove, where you're from, or in Fullerton, where you're going to school? My guess is, whichever damn place you want to. And it used to be that most college students would register to vote at home, but then they're not living in the place where the ballot goes to, so a lot of them don't vote, and it's harder for the activists on campus to collect all the ballots and send the ballots to the county registrar. It's much easier for the activist left to make sure that everyone's registered at the school so that way they can collect the ballots and make sure they're turned in and not rely on the good graces of young people who are notoriously the flakiest of voters. Another group are airline pilots, and I touched on this a bit with Royal Oaks on Friday. Airline pilots are frequently in flight attendants too, You live in one place, the airline gives you a base some other place, and you essentially spend all of your time earning Hilton honors points because you're on the road nonstop. That's how those people live. And frequently what they do is they find a place that has low taxes, and that's where they declare their residency. For the most part, I imagine it works out for them, but others get in trouble. There was a very famous case where the state of Minnesota decided that they were going to get very aggressive at going after pilots for Delta Airlines, but I think back then it was Northwest Orient, because they have a big base in Minneapolis-St. Paul. And Minnesota has much higher taxes than neighboring North Dakota. So what the controller's office for the state of Minnesota did was they went to Northwest Orient Airlines, and they asked them for a list of pilots who are based in Minneapolis who declare North Dakota as residency, and they investigated each and every one of them, and 42 of them got in trouble. Some of them went to prison. Many of them had to pay massive fines. When the state wants to go after you for getting funny with your residency, they do. And when they want to look the other way, they do that too. 
You can add another group of people to this list. Politicians. Specifically, politicians that live in one place and serve in office in another. We have that with our state legislature, where you get elected in Los Angeles and you have to get on a Southwest Airlines plane every single week and go up to Sacramento and write up write laws and vote on laws and serve in committees and those sorts of things. And then when you are done, when you're out of session, you get on the plane and you come back home. When you're Wendy Carrillo, just how many of those little bottles of liquor do you drink on the plane? Oh, I guarantee you she takes the whole cart. (laughs) (laughs) And by the way, you get advantage miles when you buy those, too, with the credit card. She's probably A-list at this point. Oh, yeah. She's in the front of the plane. (laughs) She's enjoying those hot towels, the warm nuts. The hot fudge Sundays. This is Southwest. You don't get any of that. That's true. You just get to board first and you get a free drink. <laughs> and you're delayed like everyone else. <laughs> and if you've been there a while and if you're in a safe seat, a lot of them, a lot of them get real creative with their domicile back home And they just moved their family and they moved themselves to Sacramento and Washington. They believe they will never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never be beaten. So why even bother to have a place back home? All you need is a P.O. box. And some of them essentially have just that. There was one assemblyman who ran in a district that I was living in, in San Bernardino County once. His name was Phil Wyman, if that name rings a bell. He had a big ranch out in Tehachapi, but they redrew the lines, and he wanted to run for a Victorville-based seat. So he rented a room in the back of a gas station in Phelan and declared that to be his domicile and not the massive ranch that he owned in Tehachapi. Didn't Rod Wright get in trouble for that, too? I think they actually convicted him. Where he had a big home in, I think it was Inglewood, but he was running in Los Angeles, and he had a tiny little place in L.A., and he claimed to have lived there, and the D.A. went after him, and he got in big trouble. Well, you remember we had Richard Alarcon of the L.A. City Council, who would not want to live in the district he was representing. That's right. And who would with that kind of representation? (laughs) Yvonne Burke once got in trouble, the county supervisor. She represented a South L.A. based district on the Board of Supervisors, but apparently lived in Brentwood because who wouldn't want to live in Brentwood with the possible exception of Nicole Brown Simpson? What's going on, America? (laughs) People get funny with their residency especially politicians. Now, it's illegal to lie about it, and it's illegal to not live in your district, on the city council, or in the state legislature. But all you have to do if you're a member of Congress is have a residency in that state. You do not have to live in your district. And if you're a U.S. senator, all you have to do is have residency in the state Anywhere in the state, it doesn't have to be in any particular district. Except for LaFonza Butler. Yes, she lives in Maryland. And apparently, our next U.S. Senator might live in Maryland, too. That, of course, is Adam Schiff. At the end of the day... And Randy, he's claiming that he doesn't live in a great big house in Maryland that he owns, where that address is listed on his personal checks and all the pictures of him and his kids are from that house. No, he claims to live in a tiny little condo in Burbank. That's right. He apparently is claiming primary residency in both places, but it would be very hard to believe that his primary residence is the tiny little condo in Burbank where his family does not live. And here's what got him in trouble. You can lie to the constituents all you want. You can lie to the media all you want. However, if you lie to the IRS, they will fly a helicopter over your house and have agents descend from cables down your chimney to beat you in the middle of the night. Well, this is why if you happen to have residences in different states, if you want to get that tax benefit of saying that you live in a place like Florida or Nevada, you've got to stay there exactly half the year plus one day. 
I know people who split their time between states like California and Nevada or Florida and New York. And what they do to prove that they're actually in that state 50 plus 1 percent of the time is they buy a Starbucks with a credit card every single day. So they memorialize where they are (laughs) because these states will go after you. The other group that you can't lie to besides the IRS and whatever the IRS version in your state is, is you can't lie to banks. If you lie to banks, you will get in trouble, particularly if you default on the loans. That's what got Todd Chrisley in trouble. Todd Chrisley apparently lied about how much money he had to qualify for loans that he shouldn't have received, and then he declared bankruptcy and stiffed the banks. And then the feds went after him. You lie to banks and you get caught, you get in trouble. That's bank fraud. So if you get a loan from a bank for a primary residence, that's different than if you're buying something that's going to be a rental property or a second home or a fill in the blank. The rates are different. The type of insurance that you buy is different. It's a whole different situation. So if you lie to them, the banks don't lie like that. And that's where Adam Schiff is now in trouble. CNN did a report that essentially confirmed that he actually lives in Maryland. He does not live in California. He just owns a condo here that he uses as a place to register to vote and that sort of thing. And now Adam Schiff is in the hot seat as he travels up and down the state. Ashley Zavala from a television station, I believe, is it KTVU? KCRA, Sacramento. KCRA. Okay, from KCRA, caught up with them in Hollister in Monterey County, and let's hear how that went. Congressman Adam Schiff stopped here at the Steinbeck Center in Salinas to continue his pitch to California voters, but doing so amid questions about where he lives full time. The purpose of this stop here is to promote his recent endorsement from Assembly Speaker Robert Rivas, who represents Hollister. This comes day. Rivas ain't got no love for Barbara Lee? Apparently not. Barbara Lee doesn't speak for him. <laughs> Quite frankly, this comes days after CNN first reported. Revis don't love the porter. I don't think Revis loves the porter. This comes days after CNN first reported Schiff's mortgage records show he claims a home in Maryland as his primary residence while owning a small condo in Burbank, California. Schiff's campaign has said he has been open about relocating and raising his family in Maryland as he works in D.C. We asked him about all of this. Take a listen. Why wouldn't he want to raise his family in California? Would you want that kind of representation? (laughs) Uh, You know, I think just about every member of Congress has a residence in their state and a residence back in D.C. since we're in session much of the week. Uh, And people make a family decision where they're going to have their kids. uh, And but our principal residence, our primary residence is in California. It always has been and always will be. Can you all fit in the condo? That's four people in one tiny 650 square foot condo. I'm not buying it. I guess raising your children. If they come to the state, if they come to California to do Disneyland, I don't think they're staying at the house in Burbank. I think they're getting a hotel. How many bedrooms can fit in 650 square feet? One. I used to live in a studio, and it was a large studio, and it was 800 square feet. And that fit one bed. Okay, so we're talking about a one-bedroom condo. If that. I think we're talking about a bachelor pad. And since it's Burbank, it's built in 1920, and all the electrical outlets don't work. (laughs) I guess raising your children in Maryland and just having a larger home in Maryland and maybe having a community out there, I I would... I guess, how will you respond to your opponents or your critics who might wonder if you really understand the California experience if you're having all of that in another state? He's not a Californian anymore. No, he lives in Maryland. Uh, I think it's honestly a non-issue. Members of Congress all have a residence on both coasts. Uh, and they make a decision based on how far away the capital is and the age of their kids. You know what? Say what you will about Katie Porter. She and her minivan and her three kids that eat at the grocery store all the time live in Irvine. That's right, in free housing. (laughs) 
Maybe that's the difference. Or is it We're- subsidized? where they'll get to see most of their kids. And it's really as simple as that. Schiff leads the pack in fundraising, and Revis is adding to a long list of Democrats who have endorsed Adam Schiff for U.S. Senate. That includes U.S. House Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. But it's to be seen how voters will ultimately feel about his residency situation. He still has about four months left of campaigning before that March primary election. Reporting in Salinas, Ashley Zavala, KCRA 3 News. Thank you, Ashley. According to the latest Berkeley IGS poll, Democrat Democrat Schiff and Katie Porter are leading the pack in the primary. They're trailed by Republican and former Major League Baseball star Steve Garvey, followed by Democratic Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee's getting beaten by Steve Garvey. Well, I guess Barbara Lee doesn't speak for him either. And I'm sure people are curious. We did have her on the show last week. Pascucci is starting off this thing at 1%. So this is where we are. Adam Schiff doesn't live here, and he assumes that the people of California won't care. At the end of the day... And this is essentially what happens. When you destroy the state, a lot of people who ideologically are in favor of what's going on, they vote with their feet. A lot of people have moved out of state since the Democrats destroyed it including elected officials who currently represent the state. It's hard to really have an understanding of the cost of living in California when you don't actually live in California. I mean, maybe he has the pulse of the average person better than we know. If he's packing up all the stuff and leaving the state, that's pretty much where everyone I know is. If you'd like to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. That's Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And Randy, if you missed yesterday's episode, we had a brand spanking new one that you missed. Absolutely. That's right. If you want to listen to it, you can go to the website, kabc.com. Click on podcast. Go to the Apple Podcast app, iHeart, Spotify. Search for The John Phillips Show. Hit subscribe. Download all the episodes. Or download the brand new KABC app. Just search KABC AM in the Apple App Store or the Android Store. It is the easiest way to listen to podcasts of this show. Listen live to the station whenever and wherever you are. And the podcasts go back a long ways. You want to pretend like we were back in the pandemic and Sheila Kuehl was still on the board of soups, you can do that. I have no patience for people that don't wear masks. And Randy, coming up later on in the month, we're going on the road. That's right. A week from Friday, November 17th, John and I'll be broadcasting live at the brand new Gelson's West L.A. at West Edge on the corner of Olympic and Bundy. The Gelson's West L.A. at West Edge is open now. It's absolutely gorgeous in there. We're going to be broadcasting from the craft beer, wine, and sushi bar. It's going to be a great time. Hope to see you there Friday, November 17th from noon to 3. In the meantime, what do you say we make a couple of listeners very happy? Well, let's do that right now. 790K ABC welcomes new kids on the block at the Kia Forum, July 5th, 2024. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. But right now, call in number 9 at one 888 Gets a pair of tickets to the show. Tickets furnished by Live Nation. Good luck dialing. Coming up next, we'll tell you what Congresswoman and candidate for U.S. Senate Katie Porter is up to. Well, we just told you about the hot water that Congressman and candidate for U.S. Senate Adam Schiff is in. Now, Randy, it's time to check in with Katie Porter. Fox 40 Sacramento reporter, the California Capitol reporter for Fox 40, Aton Wallace, spent a day with the Congresswoman. This was, uh, I think, a day or two before Halloween. Would you like to hear how that day went? Did the minivan make an appearance? <laughs> I think it did and the grocery store, but it starts at a campaign event. Welcome to the campaign trail, election 2024. We're in the Orange County community of Laguna Woods, and just take a look at this. More than 200 people are here, all to see Democratic U.S. Senate candidate Katie Porter. That's 200 people that had nothing better to do on a Sunday. She's at Leisure World, was she? (laughs) Well, we're talking about primary voters. She probably was. So Congressman Porter is just arriving here. Good to see you. Thanks thanks for being with us. No, I'm excited to see you again and excited that I made it. You have no idea who he is. 
Well, wait a minute. She's excited that she made it. What, did she think that the minivan would break down on the side of the freeway? I think she has that thought every day she drives that minivan. Maybe she should do something about that check engine light. No, I'm excited to see you again and excited that I made it um, to this event. It's been a lot of chaos with what's been happening in Washington. So it's really great to have a scheduled campaign event happening basically on time um, and as planned. It's been a long week in Washington. Let me ask you first and foremost, what time did you get back to the district last night? Yeah, because votes went really late, um, I took a... Uh, 10, it took up about 10.30 from Dulles, um, and so it landed around 12.30. I got home around 2 a.m. Walked- See, she actually lives in California. <laughs> she does, because anyone who lives in California and has to do business on the East Coast and fly back knows what a pain in the ass it is. Walked into my house to discover my teenage son needed help with his AP macroeconomic homework. At 2 a.m.? Wait, so he's just hanging out in the living room doing homework at 2 o'clock in the morning. This is Kevin DeLeon levels of made-up story. Yeah, either she's making this up entirely or she walked in on something embarrassing and he just grabbed whatever book was nearby and said, yeah, I'm doing this. Are you alleging that there was a Playboy inside that science book? Who knows? Probably (laughs) video games, given that this is the COVID generation. Walked into my house to discover my teenage son needed help with his AP macroeconomic homework. And then now you're going to... By the way, uh, nice humble brag there, Katie Porter. Oh, yes. Because if there's anyone I would turn to for help with economics at that macro level, it's her. And then now you're about to speak to a a room filled of people, shall we? Yes, absolutely. This is a terrific community. Terrific community as here in Laguna Woods. We have a lot of people, 200 people here, 50 people on the wait list, by the way. I mean, you have a I lot think of... we can fit them all in. Who's standing outside waiting to get into a Katie Porter event? Yeah, I look, I understand that you need access to this woman, but don't treat this campaign event like it's a Black Friday sale. This isn't Taylor Swift. No, and it's also not Macy's. Hey, hello, everybody! What is that voice? Oh, my God. I didn't know that humans could get to that pitch. No! Okay, we've heard her voice many, many, many times. Is this her greeting constituent's voice? Hey, hello, everybody! (laughs) You know what she's like? My dad's business is in Vernon. And there's a lot of warehouses in Vernon. And that's where they film Thriller. And my dad walked in as they were filming Thriller and talked to the person managing the project. And they said, oh, you want to meet Michael Jackson? Sure. Why not? And Michael Jackson walked up to him and spoke to him like a normal adult. Sounded like a normal adult. Acted like a normal adult. Everything about him was like a normal adult. And then he turned on the news that night and it was Michael Jackson speaking in his little boy voice. And he said, what the hell happened? I just talked to him today, right after lunch. And he sounded normal. And then on the news, he sounds like a child. Maybe Katie Porter is like Michael Jackson, and she has two different voices. Hey, hello, everybody. That is, uh, that's quite a squeak. Is that what a female sounds like if she's doing a Michael Jackson? And please do not picture Katie Porter grabbing her crotch. No. Hey, hello, everybody. Congress members, you head to the stage. I want to quickly ask, so what is the message you want to share with these prospective voters today? Yeah, I want to make sure they understand that despite the chaos that's been happening in Washington, I am laser focused on what's happening in their lives, which is pretty distant sometimes from what Washington's focused on. That was as generic as you can get. Yeah. What she's telling the people of Leisure World is please don't die before Election Day. If you do an absentee ballot in January when you get it, but you drop before March, does it count? It counts. It's like if the basketball leaves your hand before the (laughs) clock strikes zero, it doesn't matter if the clock is at zero when it goes through the hoop. It counts. So here we go. You ready? All right. Whenever they're going to announce me, this is so cute. She is doing some weird things with that voice. I guess that's what you need to do so they can hear you down there. So here we go. You ready? All right. Whenever they're going to announce me, this is so cute. 
This is so cute. I wonder what it was that sparked that. Well, look, when you are a politician, especially an elected representative, you have to go to a whole bunch of things you don't want to do and talk to a whole bunch of people you don't want to do. Some people are really good at masking their phoniness. I think Katie Porter has a different dialect of voice when she's doing things she doesn't want to do because she's trying to sound like she's having a good time, but it comes out in the baby voice. This is so cute. There's a lot of anger in her. This is the woman that will dump a boiling pot of potatoes on your head if you get out of line with her. Hey, hello, everybody. (laughs) But because you know the public doesn't like that type of person, you've got to hide it and you've got to come out with something that you think they will like. So in this particular case, what she does is infantilize herself. This is so cute. And please do not picture Katie Porter with a diaper. No. This is so cute. Although it is Leisure World. I'm sure they have them in all sizes down there. Congressman Katie Porter. Thank you. Look, my willingness to take on how Washington works, to do things differently, doesn't make me the homecoming queen. But it makes me someone that voters trust. Does it? Yeah. Who are you talking to? And that is really, really, really important. I just have to say thank you. Mm-hmm. I love your compassion. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you could. Can- See, when she starts talking to constituents, she gets up to that fake phony level voice. With Gavin, it's the indignant laugh. And with her, it's the phony voice. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you could come today. I mean, I really feel awful if there were any service dogs in the audience. Can you imagine what that pitch would do to their ears? If Bob Barker were alive, Bob Barker would have a benefit to muzzle her. Please do something for the puppies. They had to go through this. Hey, hello, everybody. (laughs) Squeaky. Thank you. So All as right. you walk out, you're always on the go, on the go, on the go, right? Where's the next stop? Um, I'm heading home. I have to switch loads of laundry. <sighs> Who believes that? <laughs> if you believe that, give us a call. 800-222-KABC. <laughs> 1-800-222-5222. Um, I'm heading home. I have to switch loads of laundry. <laughs> I'm just like you. I'm just like you. And then I'm going to try to run to the grocery store. I do believe that. Yeah, that part I I believe. Um, And pick up some stuff to make some ghost cookies with my kids this afternoon. So this is before Halloween, so it's not that weird. Maybe she hit that voice because someone was in a costume. (laughs) Hey, hello, everybody. (laughs) So with that, it's on the road to Katie Porter's home. Oh, boy. This thing's getting personal. (laughs) Maybe we should take a break and find out what happens to Aton Wallace at the family visit. At Halloween. (laughs) And he's knocking on the door. Trick or treat, Aton. If you'd like to email the show, you can do so at johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com. That's johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com. And, Randy, you're monitoring the mailbag. Well, John, we're getting a lot of response through the email to High Pitch Eric. Hey, hello, everybody. Excuse me, High Pitch Katie Porter. And Will writes in at johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com, and he says he was actually videotaping his dog when we were playing that clip. And this is what that sounded like. This audience is just brutal. Hey, hello, everybody. But right now, we're going to go back to the one-on-one with Katie Porter in a television station from Sacramento. Hey, hello, everybody. This is the, the famous Porter residence. This yeah? is it. Come on in. Hi, Betsy. Come on, say hi. This hey, is Betsy. Hi. How are you? This isn't weird at all for your teenage children. No. 
Good, Good to see you. Good, how are you? Good, thank you for having us. Porter's 11-year-old daughter, Betsy, took over her mom's famous whiteboard for a very good reason. So I wrote down all the Taylor Swift albums in order, and then I made a heart of all hearts. Okay, this is 100% staged. How do you even stage this with your kids? Do, are you the one that's the director, or do you bring in a political consultant to tell them what to say? Okay, Betsy, we've been seeing what's been going on with Travis Kelsey. What we need to do when this Fox 40 reporter comes to our house is you need to put on the whiteboard how much you love Taylor Swift so everyone will think Katie Porter is a Swifty. So, Unreal. So I wrote down all the Taylor Swift albums in order, and then I made a heart of all hearts. Taylor Swift, what's your favorite song? Oh, oh boy, we're going here. <laughs> Why not? Taylor Swift, what's your favorite song? All of them. <laughs> all right, do you have a favorite album? Probably like folklore right now. Okay. She's in her folklore. Wouldn't you say, Betsy, right now you're in your folklore era? Yeah. When Kevin McCarthy... See, you should vote for Katie Porter. She understands Taylor Swift lingo. Oh, yeah. She should be registering voters at the Swifty concerts. And Matt Getz was filing to get rid of the speaker. I used the Taylor Swift lyric, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Which song? Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. Album? Lover. There you wow. go. So we are fans. We are fans. <laughs> this is where... Well, I didn't see you using any of your congressional salary to buy tickets to Taylor Swift for your kids, Katie Porter. <laughs> this is where... Congress member Porter turns into mom Porter. Yeah, the whole the whole space here, yeah. There was just some frantic putting away of remote controls and gaming devices that belong to teenage boys um, before you rang the doorbell. So yeah. <laughs> and putting together that whiteboard. How about the bowl of potatoes? Where did that go? So yes. <laughs> People are always like, Well, go to your home office. And I'm always like, Ta da! This is my home office. My kitchen which is squeezed next to my exercise bike, which is... Your what? She put the exercise bike in the kitchen? <laughs> it's a motivator. Okay. Do we think this is stage two? Where she just wants to work in the exercise bike into the conversation? So I know. I'm going to take him into the kitchen. Why don't I just put it there? My kitchen, which is squeezed next to my exercise bike, which is squeezed next to my knife block so it's it's well you know some people they need something to distract them when they're doing a monotonous exercise so you know like i've got a tv so i can watch dumb youtube videos while i'm on the treadmill maybe she likes to stare at the fridge well okay what are the knives doing next to the exercise bike is throwing knives something she does for cardiovascular exercise that's throwing potatoes squeeze next to my knife block so it's it's not a it's not a particularly private space. And so we get a lot of people walking through it while I'm doing stuff. And by a lot of people, I mean the-, the kids. But they're pretty good about it, I have to say. Like, they're pretty patient about, like, I need you to be quiet for 10 minutes. What do they think when you are holding some of your most famous moments from right in this area? They don't care. They're just kids. I mean, first and foremost, I'm their mom. At the end of the day, like... Oh, she gave us one. She and Adam Schiff could do a duet. At the end of the day... At the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, like. <laughs> at the end of the day, like, they're much more concerned about whether or not I remember to sign their permission slip or, you know, what, what we're having for dinner or did I, you know, buy their dance ticket and what time's their water polo game. Her minivan says it all. And, of course, Mommy, do I really have to fill out this whiteboard with Taylor Swift stuff to make you look cool for the kids? Until the television man leaves, yes. <laughs> I think we'll have to come back to this later in the show because Aton's visit with Katie Porter isn't over. Well, it sounds like they're headed to the minivan. <laughs> All right, we've got two more hours to go on the John Phillips Show right here on Talk Radio 790 KABC.